I've been in ministry for a long time and I've talked to a lot of grieving families through the years and I really thought I knew what to say to people in grief. That is until my son died and I became the recipient of other people's comments. I really want to say thank you. I want to be careful that you understand my heart when I say what I'm about to say because in my heart I thank you so much for the thousands and thousands and thousands of letters and emails and gifts and texts and um, presents that people have dropped by. Thank you. You have provided for us this amazing cushion of compassion and support and I don't know how we would have gotten through um, the loss of our son without the thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people who have supported us. But in that process, I've discovered that from a good heart, from very well intentions, sometimes people say the stupidest things. <laughs> they don't mean to. And I realized looking back that I probably said some unintentional, I wounded people in grief unintentionally, just as we have. And so I want to just give you a few little tips, things that I've learned, things that I'm, some words I'm trying to eliminate from my vocabulary, because here's the really sad part for me, even as I'm talking to you about what you should and shouldn't say to someone who's experienced a loss, I find myself still doing the same thing. So I'm trying to correct myself in this process. Let me give you some things not to say to people who have just lost a loved one or who are going through any kind of grief. Probably the first phrase you need to eliminate is at least, the phrase at least. Because anytime we use the words at least, we're minimizing the grief, we're minimizing the loss. Here are the kinds of things that people have said to me or to others who have lost. And believe me, a lot of people have begun to tell me their own grief experiences and have confirmed what I'm about to tell you. And here are the things that sometimes people say. Well, at least you had him for 27 years. At least you know he's in heaven. At least you can get married again. At least you can have more children. At least you got to know where his body was. At least you had that job for 15 years. At least, at least, at least. And every time you start a sentence or I start a sentence with the words at least, we're telling that person on the other end of those words, what you experienced really isn't that big. In fact, you shouldn't feel so bad about your grief because at least this happened. At least you can have more children if it, you say to a, a mom who's had a miscarriage or a mom who's lost a child. At least that you, know, you can get married again if you say to a widow, I know we don't mean to and we think that's comforting. It's not comforting. It's not comforting at all. So eliminate those words at least. Another thing that I would say to eliminate are sentences like, well, God must have wanted him more in heaven than he wanted him here on earth. Or, it, or now your loved one is an angel um, in heaven. We say these things and we think they're comforting. We say things like, well, you know, God's will, it must be God's will. Those kinds of statements only heap more pain on the person who is in grief and the person who is mourning. Because first of all, they're a little bit theologically off. We don't become angels, so there's no comfort in that. It makes God seem like a big old cosmic meanie. Well, he must have needed him or her or your baby up in heaven more than he needed him or her here on earth with you. And you're like, well, that just feels very cruel. And so some of the sentences that we use to give supposedly encouragement to people actually become ways of wounding them further in their grief. What I would say to you instead is that you become somebody who is willing to just show up with your presence. Sometimes no words at all need to be said. We, we get so uncomfortable and sometimes we don't know what to do with the silence. And so we try to fill the empty silence with words and frequently those words do more damage than good. So a hug, if you've got to say something, you, you never can go wrong by saying, I'm so sorry for your loss. Because you're expressing compassion, you're joining with them in their sorrow, you're acknowledging that what has happened to them has been a loss, you're not, you're not minimizing it, you're not saying that they should contain it all to make you comfortable, you're joining with them and you say, I'm so sorry for your loss. Another thing that you can say, and you can never go wrong, is when you say to somebody, I'm praying for you and your family. Because it says again that you are cognizant of the fact they've lost somebody dear to them and, and you care so much, you're willing to go to God in prayer on their behalf. You're joining with them in their sorrow. So saying to somebody, I'm so sorry for your loss or I'm praying for you and your family, 
those are words that I can pretty much guarantee you will bring comfort to the person that you're trying to encourage. Overall, we don't want to be like Job's friends. In Job, um, the first couple chapters, Job loses everything. He loses his family, he loses his children, he loses his livelihood, he loses his livestock, he becomes ill himself, and his friends come and they sit down on the ground with him for three days, the Bible says, in silence, because the weight of his grief was so big. What you can do with someone who is grieving is be like Job's friend. Come and offer your presence. Job's friends messed up when they started talking. It was when they started talking and tried to fill that empty space that they, that they hurt him. So be like Job's friends in the beginning. Just your arms around somebody, your love, your compassion, your presence. We all want to help people who are mourning and who are suffering. This is the best way I can tell you.